Hey everybody, and welcome back to Sweatpants BI. It has been a little while. I am freshly returned with Nina from Belize, and I am maybe slightly less pasty than I usually am 365 days a year. We had a wonderful trip, but while we were in Belize, uh, I started uh, realizing that, man, there was a real appetite on YouTube for some DAX training. Uh, the series that I just did on DAX uh, has uh, definitely been among my most popular videos. I'm proud to say that I have all kinds of uh, new new followers on Sweatpants BI, which is, eh, you know, whatever. I'm just happy to teach people. Um, but I did have some people reaching out to me uh, about those DAX sessions, asking for more practical real world examples of applying DAX. And this got me thinking to, um, you know, some of my first Power BI reports where I had to churn some pretty uh, complex DAX. And that was actually uh, when I was leading analytics for uh, a human resources department at one of my first employers. And one of the most challenging metrics that I first had to calculate in DAX was employee retention. It took me forever to kind of wrap my head around the ins and outs of that particular calculation. And so if you're somebody who does HR analytics, employee retention may be one of the most uh, vital metrics that you're interested in calculating in DAX. After all, employee retention is an extremely common and important uh, measure that companies look at to, to evaluate you know, whether or not they're successfully retaining uh, not just employees, but top performers, talent, and, and also identify you know, maybe where some problematic departments or areas of the companies might be uh, where uh, retention seems to be falling off so that a company can investigate and hopefully take strides to mitigate any retention problems that might be surfacing. But like I said, as far as DAX problems go, calculating employer retention can really be challenging to someone who's relatively new to DAX. So now that I'm freshly back from vacation, I thought that I would jump back into Power BI with a fresh new HR data set that's probably similar to what you might see in the field if you're doing HR analytics so that we can talk about how to calculate uh, this very important retention calculation. So over to Power BI. So before we get into the actual report builder part, let's just go ahead and jump over to the data view real fast and just take a look at what our data looks like. And I mean, this is exactly the kind of data set that you would expect to see from a company uh, with regard to its employees, right? We have like an employee ID here that is a unique identifier of all of the employees um, that have presumably ever existed within the company. We have, we have you know, just the employee names. Of course, these are all super made up fake names uh, for this hypothetical company. And then we have things like hire dates indicating when each employee joined the company. And we have something like term date or departure date, some date that indicates when employees left the company. And, you know, you would expect to you know, not see uh, term dates for all employees. You know, hopefully, if a company is uh, doing a good job with retaining its employees, you're going to see a lot more employees who are still with the company uh, than who have departed the company. So let's go ahead and just hop back over to our employee retention tab uh, so that we can start actually building our measure. But before we build our measure, the first thing that we need to do is def define employee retention. You know, what is it? And the way that we describe employee retention is we are basically trying to deliver a very, very simple formula, and that is how many employees we started with. And from how many employees we started with, we want to know how many employees are still here. So it's a simple formula. Basically, how many employees are remaining of the employees that we started with, which is which makes sense when you think about it, right? We're literally talking about of a starting number of employees, how many or what percentage were we able to retain? So you would not expect to ever see this measure get more be more than 100%. You know, we can't uh, retain more employees than we started with. 
Um, and, and so that's why we're, we're always going to be looking at some sort of starting number of employees. And over time, we're going to track how many of those employees we were able to retain. If we pick up new employees uh, later on or uh, in the course of that time interval, we're not concerned about those those new employees because we, we didn't retain them we just picked them up along the way so it's very very important that we're always focusing on this number and that is how many employees we started with so let's go ahead and first just add uh, a list of employees over here to the report and to this list of employees if I can make it a little bit larger, we're going to add hire dates and term dates. And once again, you would not expect to see a whole lot of term dates because if, an, if the company is doing a good job, hopefully they're retaining a lot of employees and those employees that we are retaining hopefully are still with us. We're not going to see that they have left the company. So let's go ahead and just sort this data by term date and let's talk about another kind of nuance with employee retention. And that is that we can't actually calculate uh, employee retention for the first year uh, of this data set in 2012. And why can't we calculate employee retention for that, first, for that first year? Because really, we started 2012 with no employees, right? All of uh, our first year of employees, these, these employees were just hired throughout the course of the first year of this company's uh, presumed existence, which is 2012. So we can't calculate retention for 2012. We started with no employees. Um, so by definition, we you know uh, are retaining zero for, for 2012. So the first year of uh, that we can calculate retention for is going to be 2013. So right now we only have one measure in our data set and it's over here and it's just an employee count a distinct count of all employees so let's go ahead and add that and you can see we've got 4138 next let's go ahead and just grab our higher date field again and we're just going to create a slicer from higher date i'm going to go over here real fast and turn off the responsive setting and so we've got a higher date and I'm gonna go ahead and just restrict this to just looking at employees that were hired in 2012 so those are the only employees that we're going to be interested in and you can see that we hired 419 employees in the first year of the company which is 2012. I also real quickly want to see how many employees we're going to be starting with in 2013, which of course is the first year for which we can actually calculate employee retention. So I'm going to go ahead and sort by term date real fast. And we're going to see that of these 419 employees in 2012, I lost one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So of 419 employees, I lost 10 of those. So the for the first year of employee retention, the number that I'm going to be starting with is going to be 409. That is what we're going to look at for how many of 409 employees were we able to retain uh, throughout all of 2013. So let's go ahead and start putting together everything that we need for this employee retention calculation. First, I'm gonna go ahead and just add a new table over here, and this is going to be year. And notice that I'm going to be using my date table over here, my big date table. And I wanna show you something else that for me was a little bit counterintuitive the first time that I ever had to calculate employee retention. And that is that there is going to be basically no relationship whatsoever between my date table and my employee data. And, you know, you're, if I, I know that when I first started building HR, uh, you know, um, Power BI reports, I thought, well, you know, I've got over here in my fact table, a higher date and a term date. Maybe I'm supposed to relate one of those to my date table. 
And that's actually not what we're going to do because we're going to be just comparing our hire dates and term dates relatively to this date table within our DAX measures. So right now you can see there's no relationship whatsoever between my date table and my people fact table, which is why I'm showing 419 employees for every single year. So let's go ahead now and start calculating the uh, number of employees that we're starting with in each given year. So we're going to create a new measure here, and this is going to be our starting headcount. And by headcount, I just mean the number of employees. So we're going to calculate all employees, and we're going to want to filter our fact table so that we're only looking at employees that were hired before the first date of, you know, whatever the starting date is for the given time period that we've selected. And in this case, is years. it's years. So for 2013, we're going to be looking at all employees who were hired before January 1st, 2013. For 2014, we're going to be looking at all employ employees that were hired before January 1st, 2014, January 1st, 2015, and so on and so forth. And so this is the first batch of employees that we're going to be looking for. The next batch of employees that we're interested in is we need to reconcile our term dates, right? Because we want to make sure that in future years, with future start dates, we don't want to include employees who have already left the company. So we want to make sure that we build in additional DAX logic here for employees who we know have not left the company. And so in this case, we're going to be looking at all employees where the term date equals blank or employees who have term dates that are after the start of the year. And then let's go ahead and close out this measure and drop it into our table down here. And so now you can see that this is working exactly the way that I planned. And you can see in 2013, our starting headcount is 409 which if you'll recall is the 419 employees that were hired in 2012. And you can, and remember that's what we're currently filtered to. So we have our 419 here. And the reason that we're starting 2013 with 409 employees is because we lost one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of those 2012 hires within 2012. So we're starting 2013 with 409 employees. In 2014, we're starting with 380 employees. That means that we must have lost 29 employees in 2013. We can probably even test that out by counting all of the 2013 employees. And so let's go back up here and just revisit our DAX so that we understand how this is working. For any time period in our date table, we're just checking against our date table to see if the higher date is less than whatever the first date would be for 2013, 2014, 2015, etc. And we're also making sure that we include all employees who have not been terminated while also making an allowance for employees that were terminated, but they were terminated after the start of the period. In other words, we're going to be including them in the, the years that follow. And you can see that our starting headcount is always going to be going down, right? Because, you know, all of these employees, they're either here or they're gone in subsequent years, right? So our starting headcount by definition is always going to be going down because again, picking up new employees doesn't really matter for this exercise, if we pick up new employees in a given year, those employees don't get counted until subsequent years because then they're there at the start. So let's go ahead and move on to our next calculation. And of course, this is going to be our 
ending headcount. In other words, how many employees are remaining. So we're going to calculate this as once again, all employees, and we're going to filter our fact table. And this is going to look pretty similar to what we just calculated, except this time we're once again going to be looking at employees who were hired before the start of whatever time interval we're looking at, right? Because we wanna make sure that we're always evaluating our ending employees uh, as a comparison to the number of employees that we started with. So the reason that we wanna make sure that we're filtering for employees who were hired before the starting period of our time interval is because we wanna make sure that we're comparing apples and apples. We're always comparing the same group of employees when you're talking about retention. Next, we're going to add another filter to this where once again, we're looking uh, to make an allowance for employees who are still with the company or in this time, we wanna look at um, basically counting employees who were terminated at some point within the year. So now we're going to add our ending headcount here. And whoops, I just realized that I made one mistake here. And that is, this should be last date. There we go, that looks much better. Okay, and the reason that I needed to change that to last date is that now we're making an allowance for uh, basically employees who were, who were uh, eliminated or who left the company after the last date in any given time period. In, in other words, um, we're now uh, not looking at employees who were who left the company after 2013. We like because of the 2012 employees or the 2013 employees, some of these employees likely left the company much later, like 2016, 2017, 2018. But we wanna make sure that we're including those employees in years where they were present for the entire year. So if they were eliminated, that's fine, but we don't wanna count, um, we don't want to basically uh, remove them from our retention if they left the company outside of the retaining period that we're interested in here. So we're only look, looking now at employees who were termed within the calendar period. And so that's how we get, you know, 380 for 2013, 353 for 2014. You, you can see that it literally uh, mirrors the ending headcount for any given year mirrors the starting headcount for the following year. That is exactly how we know that we're calculating this correctly, right? Because the headcount on the last day of 2013 becomes the headcount for the first day of 2014. In other words, we're starting a new year, which means we're starting a new batch that we're going to be evaluating for retention. And so by the end of 2014, we ended up with 353 employees. That means we started 2015 with the same 353 employees. And then it looks like we only lost three more by the end of 2015. And again, currently we're just looking at our 2012 employees. So let's go ahead and calculate our retention measure. And this is going to be our ending headcount divided by the number of employees that we started with. I'm gonna go ahead and add that down here. And there you go. So you can see that for 2013 and 2014 actually, our retention was 92.9%. For 2015, it was much higher, 99.2% until finally, I'm pretty sure that the data set starts to run out of uh, data for this particular group of 2012 employees, but then we end up with about 100% retention. So now let's go ahead and remove the filter entirely from higher date so that we can look at employee retention within the context of the entire company. And once again, you can see coming into 2013, we had a starting headcount of 409. No change there, right? You know, because uh, we only had 2012 employees that we were looking at. 
uh, when we came into 2013. So we started 2013 with uh, 409 employees. We ended with 380 employees. That means 92.9% was our retention. Now, one thing that you might be thinking now, well, Sean, you've, you've clearly screwed this up because now 380 doesn't match to 757 and 697 doesn't match to, to 1,102. So this is screwed up, right? And no, it's not. Because remember, when we first started calculating this, we were just looking at 2012 uh, hires. Now, by expanding the entire time range, we are now folding in the employees who were hired throughout 2013, throughout 2014, throughout 2015. But even though we're hiring those employees, they do not count towards employee retention for the year that they were hired because they were not a part of that starting headcount on January 1st, 2013. Those employees that were hired throughout 2013, assuming that they're still there on January 1st, 2014, that is when they kick into the retention uh, formula. So you'll notice that, yeah, 380 does not match to 757, but that's because this just means that we must have hired, you know, three more than 300, uh, almost 350 employees throughout 2013. And those employees that we hired in 2013 that were still there on 2014, they're now a part of the retention formula. So this is where they come in. And of these 757 employees who were present on January 1st, 2014, you can see at the end of the year, 697 were remaining. And then you can see it looks like we hired another three to 400 employees uh, in 2014. And those joined the retention equation in 2015. So again, there's the reason that I wanted to do a video on employee retention is that it def, the things like that definitely tripped me up when I first started calculating uh, retention metrics. But uh, you know, one of the things that is really cool about this is that we have a very flexible um, you know uh, calculation now or DAX formula where we it doesn't just have to be by year. You know, if we want to get a little bit more granular with this, we absolutely can. So let's go ahead and instead of calculating it uh, on an annual basis, let's go ahead and start calculating this on a monthly basis. And so I'm going to go ahead and instead of using month year, let's use year month. There we go. Okay, that's looking a little bit better. So if you'll remember over here, our term dates didn't even start. I'm probably going to have to do quite a bit of scrolling here. Let's just do it this way. Actually, there's still too many. Uh, our first term date in the data set was in November. So if we're calculating retention on a monthly instead of an annual basis, then we would not expect to see anything but 100% retention until November when we have our first employees leaving the company. And now you can see 98% retention for November, 99% retention for December. This is obviously a lot more granular than is useful for a lot of companies uh, to evaluate retention since employees are constantly coming and going. But just letting you know that if you did need to calculate, you know, a um, more granular retention, you absolutely can do that using this formula because you're always going to be picking up the number of employees on the first date of whatever time interval you're looking at and the number of employees that were remaining on the last date of that time interval. So even though annual retention is pretty much the standard and the norm for calculating this measure, just letting you know that the way we composed these uh, DAX formulas does give you a little bit more flexibility to calculate retention for other time periods as well.